What is the most important factor in determining the runway direction of an airport? The answer is the wind. The most suitable runway direction for takeoff and landing is determined only after years of accumulating and analyzing wind direction at the airport. A runway, taxiway, and apron are the most basic components that an airport should have. Since there is only one intersection taxiway, the aircraft must backtrack through the runway to take off. This is also true when entering the apron after landing. For a smooth 180 degree turn, a turn pad is usually placed at the end of the runway. In such an airport, the runway occupancy time is long due to the backtrack, so it is necessary to maintain more distance than general separation. Therefore, the runway capacity is inevitably low. This is a common configuration at small airports with few flights. Intersection taxiway and parallel taxiway are added to reduce runway occupancy time due to the backtrack. As a result, the departing aircraft can start takeoff roll as soon as the landing aircraft vacates the runway. Naturally, the runway capacity increases. If a rapid exit taxiway is added, the runway capacity will be further increased. If the traffic volume increases to an extent in which a single runway can't manage, an additional runway parallel to the runway is added. The parallel runway can be operated separately for takeoff and landing, and it has a low workload and high efficiency to easily operate traffic flow, so it is a configuration that is being operated in many airports. In parallel runways, the distance between two runways is an important factor in determining capacity. Even if two runways are used, if the distance between the two runways is narrow, regulated intervals and time for separation of aircraft must be maintained for safety reasons. In other words, there is a limit to the increase in capacity. Conversely, if the distance between the two runways is sufficient, the independent operation is possible without affecting the operation of the other runway. For this independent runway operation, the runway centerline must be separated by more than 4,300 feet, and most major airports design this space as aprons and terminals. If two parallel runways are added here, takeoff and landing can be operated separately from each side, and the capacity is greatly increased. Since the tower controllers cannot monitor all areas at any time, the controllers are in charge of each side. Representative hub airports around the world, such as Incheon, LA, and Hong Kong are all operated in the form of parallel runways with aprons and terminals in the center. The parallel runway has a limitation that no matter how large the number of runways is, the operation is impossible when there is a severe crosswind. Airports with frequent changes in wind direction or frequent crosswinds operate intersecting runways to overcome these shortcomings. Intersecting runways have the advantage of minimizing wind effects, but because there are many factors which influence other runways, such as aircraft approach, landing, and go-around, the controller's workload is higher. Also, the location of the intersection where the two runways intersect greatly affects the capacity. For example, if a runway is used for takeoff and landing respectively, the takeoff aircraft must hold until the landing aircraft has passed the intersection area. Therefore, the closer the intersection is to the touchdown area for landing, the shorter the takeoff waiting time and the higher the capacity. Open V runway means runways in different directions but non-intersecting runways. 
The capacity of the open V runway varies depending on the direction of the aircraft on each runway. If two aircraft take off from each runway and the takeoff direction is converging, the controller must hold one of the two aircraft. On the other hand, if the takeoff direction is diverging, independent takeoff is possible and capacity increases. An airport's runway configuration doesn't just take into account wind and capacity. Since certain areas have frequent crosswinds, an intersecting runway was planned to be built, but there is a risk that aircraft routes may pass the populated area or there may be obstacles on the ground. If the land for which the airport is planned is a foggy area, this is also not a perfect site plan. The best airport is an airport that meets the operating demands, has fewer safety hazards related to weather and terrain, and is least affected by noise all at the same time. Today's video ends like this. What configuration do you think is the best airport, or where do you want to work? ATC for you.